When I was first learning how to code, our university made us use Terminal to write, compile, and run our code. And they didn't even teach us how to use an IDE. And so Terminal was our IDE. And if you don't know what an IDE is, it's an integrated development environment. And Terminal was my first IDE. Now I am thankful that my university taught us to use Terminal first because Terminal is actually a really important and powerful tool for software developers. And so it's really helpful because it allows you to interact more directly with your computer. And so you can write, compile, run your code, and also handle a lot of configurations in your computer. For example, when I was working in networks and security, I was building programs that involved networks and sending data to other computers and other devices. And so I had to do a lot of network configuration in my computer. So I really needed to use Terminal to be able to set my network up to do these applications. When I was starting out, I used Terminal a lot as my IDE, but you're probably smarter than me and you're already using an IDE, a real IDE. Or maybe you're using VS Code, which is a code editor, which behaves like an IDE. But eventually, if you're a real developer, you're going to need to learn how to use Terminal in your IDE. And so that's why I'm making this video to help you use Terminal with VS Code. One of the first problems I had with VS Code is that when I would run my program, it would run it in this output tab when I really wanted it to run in a terminal tab. And that's because with a terminal tab, I could easily stop the program or put in some user input to test my program. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to open the terminal window in VS Code. And I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can run your programs in terminal. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you some basic terminal commands so that you can actually use it in your software development. So my name's Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the foundations of software development. So let's get started. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects and I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. All right, so here's a simple calculator program in C, and there's actually a lot of ways that you can get to the terminal window. So there's actually a terminal option here and you can just hit new terminal and there you go. So you open the terminal here. There's another way you can do it. You can go to view and this is what I like to do. We just see the terminal option here. And then you can also see there's a short keyboard shortcut. There's control and this apostrophe. It's not the normal apostrophe. It's the special one that's next to the number one on your keyboard. And so you can actually just toggle control and then the apostrophe and you can just bring up the terminal and close it. All right, now how about running your code in terminal? And this is really important because if you're running your program and this is using Code Runner, the extension. So the extension that I'm using is Code Runner. So go to extensions and Code Runner. So I'm using this extension here. It's this one right here. And so when I run the, when I run the, code here, uh, it oh, it outputs to this output tab and it's really annoying because I, don't, I can't actually see this printf in there so I can't even put any user input in here. I'm, I'm hitting my keyboard, there's nothing going on. I really want it to run the code in terminal so I can actually put in my calculation and I can actually see this printf. And so in order to do that, you have to stop and then just go to your settings. So you go to settings. And you can actually just type in run in terminal. And then there's going to be an option here and this is for code runner. So you might be using a different extension to run your code, but you'll eventually see something like run in terminal for the code runner that you're using. So I'm just gonna check this, this box here. Then I'm gonna close settings and now I'm gonna run this one. And there you go. So now I can actually see my printfs here. So calculator application, enter the calculation and I can actually put in a calculation like one plus one. 
So result is two. Do you want to do another calculation? No. And so there you go. So now the other way that you can run your program is you, if you do ls, which just shows you all of the files that are in this calculator directory. And this calculator directory by default is the same directory that you have open in VS Code. So when you open terminal, it's naturally or it's automatically by default going to open this directory here. So you can see calculator and then calculator.c. So there's calculator and calculator, sorry, there's calculator here and calculator.c. And so this ls just shows what files are in this directory here. And so you can actually, when you run your code actually, you can see the terminal commands. And if you look here, it says cd users Henrik documents Henrik M dev GitHub calculator. So it's actually navigating to this this directory, the, this directory right here. And then there's it's doing and, and then it's doing GCC because it's going to compile the code for me. And when I was in university, I did this by hand. I would type this out myself. And then it adds another instruction or another command to the terminal. And it says it's going to run the calculator executable. And so it's running the calculator executable. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to do control C to exit the program. And so you can actually, instead of running the code this from here, you can actually just run the code here using the executable that was already generated. And you can do dot slash calculator. And there you go. So I'm now I'm running the program again through terminal instead of using this play button over here. So one plus three, four, no. All right, now some basic commands that are probably gonna be really useful for you is, first one is let's try to delete this executable. So you can use rm to remove and then just remove calculator. And be careful not to remove or delete the .c file. You just wanna remove the executable. And this was generated when you use GCC. And like I said, this is why you need to know how to use terminal as a developer because you're going to be compiling your programs through terminal a lot of times. So we're just going to remove calculator, delete calculator. And so you see, you can see it actually disappear here. And then if we do ls, ls allows you to see all the files in this directory. So you see the calculator is gone. This executable is not, it's not there anymore. CD is another popular terminal command. This one allows you to navigate to different directories. So this calculator directory, like I mentioned earlier, is inside my GitHub directory. So you can, if I do CD dot dot, which allows you to go to the previous directory that holds this calculator directory. And then there you go. So we're in the GitHub directory. And maybe I should have shown you this. So pwd is another popular command you can use. pwd will allow you to see the path that you're in, the path of this directory. So the path of this directory is users, Henrik, documents, Henrik, mdev, GitHub. And then you can do ls. And you can see all of the projects that I have with GitHub. And where were we early, earlier? We were in the calculator directory. So this is the directory that I was in earlier. So if you want to go to this calculator directory, you can just do CD and then calculator. And so now we're back in calculator. And if I do PWD again, just to see the path of this directory. So now we're users, Henrik documents, Henrik MDev GitHub calculator. I would like to show you again, those commands that were run when you run this play button here. So you run, you run this play button, it actually, so you see the CD, we already taught you what CD does, it navigates to a directory. And so it navigated to this directory here. And so this goes to users, Henrik documents, Henrik M dev GitHub calculator, which is the same path as this one. So it navigated to this directory here, and then it compiled using this command here. And then it run, or it ran the, or it's running this executable right now. So I can show you, this is how you would compile in terminal. So let's exit this first and let's delete this one. Well, let's actually use RM to delete it. So 
So we can actually use GCC here to compile the calculator.c file. Actually, if you do GCC calculator.c on its own, it's going to create this a.out, this a.out executable. And so you just run a.out like this with dot slash at first and then a.out, and it's this is how you run the program. So one plus five and no. And then you can use clear to clear it so it looks nice. But let's use that GCC command from earlier. So this command here, it just changes the a dot out here to have the name calculator. So let's do that again. Let's remove a dot out, remove calculator, clear. So this is how I used to compile my code before, calculator.c dash o, and let's just name it executable. So now executable was generated and now we can run executable here. So you can actually name the executable whatever you want and you can run your program using that executable. If you do ls-nrt, this will list the files in this directory but it also show you the permissions. So you see the x here, it shows that this is uh, has executable permission so I can actually execute this. This one is read write and then read. These refer to different users within your system. And so you can see already terminal gives you a lot of lot more information about these files here that the VS code doesn't tell you. So ls-nrt is really, really helpful. So this is the current permissions for executable. And if you wanna just change it to be read only, you can actually do chmod and then for and executable, and then lsnrt again, and so you can see it's only it's a read-only executable. So if we try to run the executable using dot slash, it's going to tell you permission denied. So if you want the executable to be able to be run, you have to use shmod again, and I usually use plus x for executable. And then now I have, I've given it the executable permissions. So now we can run this. And so now we can do the calculations here. So chmod is another popular command. If you're trying to run an executable and you realize you're not able to, you get this permission denied, then you can change the permissions so that it's allowed to execute. So you can execute your executable. Another popular command for creating directories, say you want to put a directory in here, instead of doing new folder, you can just do it in terminal and just say make dir new directory. And so there's a new directory here and there's nothing inside. And so we can navigate to it using CD and then we can actually create a new main.c file here and then I'm using VI and this is another, this is how I was writing my code in terminal. Okay, I created main.c and so you can actually look inside new directory, it has main.c here. You can use ls over here to see main.c. Now I don't really need this new directory, I wanna delete it, so just go back to the calculator directory and then we use rm-rf to remove this new directory. And there you go, now it's gone. Let's remove the executable as well. And let's just use this to run our code. And there you go. All right, so that's a brief introduction on how to use Terminal with VS Code. I taught you how to open Terminal, how to run your code in Terminal, and some basic Terminal commands. And I'd love to hear from you too. How are you gonna use Terminal with VS Code? I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, you can download my 30-day beginner coding challenge. 
and it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it really helped you out. And if it did help you out, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. And if you want to hear more about Terminal, how to use Terminal or how to use VS Code, you can check out these tutorials and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.